Hey, I got a quick, uh, I don't want to really say Bible study, but uh, I just wanted to ask a couple questions, try to get people to think a little bit deeper. Uh, I shared a video the other day about the called and chosen because there's a lot of people out there that like to put labels on people. And, you know, because I believe in predestination, called and chosen, then they'll call me labels like a Calvinist, where I don't believe what the Calvinists believe. They believe that God arbitrarily chooses some to save and others he doesn't. But I believe that, like I've said, that something happened in eternity past. But my whole point is about free will. And I always try to use this example. Uh, people that believe that free will, you have the free will choice to get saved. And uh, I always ask them about Lazarus. You know, the one that Jesus raised from the dead. He was dead and stunk for like four days. So think about it. We're all, before Christ breathes the Holy Spirit in us, we're all dead in our trespasses. So he uses Lazarus for a good example of being dead. He literally was dead, but there's always a connotation or a double application, you know, a deeper meaning. Like when he healed the blind man and the scales came off of his eyes. It was more than just healing his physical sight. But it's like, think about a dead person and look at it as like the people in the world. I don't want to call them normies, but people that just don't care, that love the world, that just basically most people you come into every, you know, every day you run into them. It's like you can preach to them until you're blue in the face, you know, unless God draws them then they're, they don't have that free will choice to get saved. Kind of like with Lazarus. He couldn't do anything. He was dead. Jesus basically called him, said, Lazarus, come forth. So that's my whole point. And I kind of want to touch on a couple other verses that are really good just to make you think. Because I know a lot of preachers that will say, well, Jesus... You know, like John three sixteen, he, you know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that, you know, the whole verse that whoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If Jesus died for everybody, like, like all these preachers say, and I also go back to the parable of the sower, you have wheat and you have tares. Jesus did not die for the tares. And here's, here's more proof of this. This is a good one. John 17, 9, he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for those which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So if Jesus died for the whole world, how come he's not praying for the whole world? He specifically says, I pray not for the world. And here's another really good one. This is one of my favorite ones. I got to turn my phone sideways real quick. Okay. Here it is right here. I'm going to start with uh, Romans 8. I'll do 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So God's chosen, the body of Christ, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is making intercession for us and groanings which cannot be uttered. But that's for God's people. That's for God's chosen. And then my favorite one, uh, well, I like, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit because he, I just read that one, hold on. 828, this is one of my favorites. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So it's all about God's free will. God does as he chooses. You know what I mean? I don't have the scripture pulled up, but uh, nobody comes to the Father unless he's drawn. Jesus even said that he will find all that the Father gave him, and he will not lose any but raise them up at the last day. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, show you a couple verses. Just I think 
my whole stance on free will is kind of somewhere in the middle. Because obviously you can choose to eat a ham sandwich or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. But a lot of people that are really into no free will will say, well, God leads you to make that choice. Or God gave your taste buds where you like certain things over other. But we do know the scripture says that God even created the uh, wicked for the day of evil, or the evil for the day of the wicked. I think it's in Proverbs. But it's just it's just deep, really deep stuff. But uh, like I said, the one I had before was John, where uh, I can't remember what uh, verse it was now, but where he says, I pray not for the world, but for those the Father gave me. So like I said, if he's uh, if he died for the whole world, how come he's not praying for the whole world? But anyway, like I said, I'm not trying to teach anybody. I'm just kind of showing you how I'm seeing it. We all need to uh, take this to God. You know, let the Holy Spirit lead us into all truth because the truth isn't subjective. You know, the truth is the truth. And we definitely live in a world full of lies. But anyway, guys, I hope this maybe makes somebody think out there. And uh hope you guys have a good day. God bless. Later on.